PVMing in old school RuneScape is simple. Do lots of damage, get the monster's HP to zero, pick up the loot, rinse, and repeat. Well, maybe it's a little bit more complex than that. All the bosses you kill, the dragons you slay, the gargoyles you crush, they're all weak to something. That should ultimately decide what you use to kill it. Welcome guys, my name is Coxie and I'm here to give you a brief rundown of the changes we'll be seeing to the defensive bonuses that every NPC has. If you're more of a hands-on person, don't worry. A beta world is live now for you to get out there and get a feel for everything yourself. In this rebalancing project, there are three goals. Number one, Think about the future. This project will provide the old school team more levers to balance future bosses and new concepts for sweet new rewards down the line. While I won't rule out the possibility of overloads and the legendary divine spirit shield being added, let's focus on weaponry for today's video. Old school RuneScape recently turned 11 years old, and one thing we've learned is that being conscious about power creep is important for the longevity of our game. These rebalances will do exactly that. Goal number two, Encourage players to bring specialized weapons and attack styles for certain monsters. These adjustments will do things like widen the gap between attack styles that NPCs are vulnerable and invulnerable to, and even adding new defensive bonuses to consider when gearing up for your Slayer task. And finally, goal number three, solve the elemental spell problem. A powered staff paired with any of the three non-standard spell books has become the go-to choice for most combat scenarios, so the old school team is looking to give you more potential situations to swap to the standard spell book for PVMing. Here are the ways we'll see these goals be achieved. Implement elemental weaknesses, supplement these weaknesses with elemental spell scaling, exaggerate existing weaknesses, and implement a new split ranged weakness, light, standard, and heavy. Let's first start with elemental weaknesses. Funny enough, there's already a handful of NPCs in the game that have elemental weaknesses, which is currently just a double damage bonus. These weaknesses also are not communicated through the monster examine menu, so the first step is to fix that. Then, the flat damage bonus will be adjusted to a system that makes much more sense. For every point of elemental weakness that an NPC has, your spell will gain plus 1% accuracy and plus 1% damage. So. If an Ice Giant has 50% weakness to Fire Spell, a cast of Fire Surge will gain 50% bonus to both accuracy and damage. Elemental weakness percent will be an additive increase alongside your current gear's magic damage percent. This approach, as opposed to a multiplicative increase, means that max gear mage setups won't have their DPS scale up to astronomical levels. Now, this doesn't quite solve the elemental spell problem. Currently, higher level elemental spells do more damage. That is, for spells of the same tier, fire spells will always be the best damage option. With the addition of elemental weaknesses, the old school team would prefer players choose the kind of spell that the NPC is weak to, instead of just defaulting to fire. Now these spells in the same tier will share the same max hit as you level up, so you'll have the freedom to choose whichever element you want to, but also you'll be incentivized to use the element that your opponent is weak to. You might be thinking this is a pretty significant buff to wind spells due to their cheap room cost, but it's counteracted by no NPCs having weakness to that element. With this adjustment to spell scaling, the tomes of fire and water need to see some changes as well. These items were designed to make the standard spellbook more relevant, and they did an okay job at that, but maybe we shouldn't be relying on a couple of items to carry a spellbook's combat relevance. Their damage bonuses will be reduced to 10% for the respective elements, which keeps them in the running for best in slot and niche scenarios while still being a relatively easy offhand to obtain. You won't be able to test out these changes just yet in the live beta, but keep your eyes peeled because soon you'll be able to in an upcoming item changes beta. Existing damage buffs in PvP would be unchanged, since players themselves can't have elemental weaknesses, so reducing the tome's effectiveness here is not necessary. Lastly, let's talk about range defense. One reason why the melee reward space feels so diverse is because melee bonuses are split into three types. We have stab, slash, and crush. These defense bonuses heavily influence which weapon would be used for the job, and this isn't currently the case for range defense. While your target's combat levels play a role in deciding what weapon you'll bring, range defense just isn't super relevant. Taking the same approach as melee, splitting range defense into three categories would allow for promoting some weapons over others in certain combat encounters. It would also widely open up the reward space for future ranged weapons. These categories would be dependent on the ammunition that you're using, like so. Heavy ammunition would include bolts and javelins. Standard ammunition would include arrows, including the crystal bow and its powerful successor. And light ammunition would include thrown weaponry, such as darts and knives. Okay, okay. Now that we've gotten through all that information, it's time for the fun part. It's time for some examples. 
I mentioned earlier that adamant dragons will have a 50% vulnerability to earth spells, but fear not, this won't necessarily deter you from using the Dragon Hunter Lance for your quick slayer task. On top of this, their weakness to stab will be slightly exaggerated, reduced by 10, and their current 95 range defense bonus will be reduced only for heavy range defense. I've created a couple of graphs to help visualize these changes. Let's start with our med game setup first. Dragon Sword and Broad Bolts experience a 10 to 20% DPS increase, with Dragon Sword gaining a significant edge over the Warp Staff. Earth Blast receives a 55% DPS increase, making it the best option to use out of these four med game setups. Moving on over to our end game setup, Remember, Powered Staffs will not see any changes. As it currently stands, Sanguinesti beats out Dragon Hunter Crossbow with Enchanted Dragon Diamond Bolts, and it also beats out Harmonized Staff with Earth Surge. Well, not anymore. With the proposed changes, Harm Staff Earth Surge will go from 4.5 to 7.7 .7 damage per second, a 71% DPS increase, making it a superior option over the Sanguinesti. Dragon Hunter Crossbow notices a 9.68% DPS increase also pushing it ever so slightly over the Sang Staff. The Adamant Dragon's exaggerated weakness to stab keeps the Dragon Hunter Lance on top with a 5% increase in DPS. I know, I know, it's a lot of numbers. The takeaway to focus here is that the current best in slot, Dragon Hunter Lance, it's not changing. These rebalances are allowing for other options to become more viable along a player's route to max gear. Oh, Gargoyles. Whether you're there for Slayer XP, to make money, or to bank some smithing XP, We've all had to kill them at some point, and conveniently enough, they will also be seeing a sizable change to their defensive bonuses, with the intention of cementing Crush as the attack style you'd want to slay them with. The current difference in damage outputs between Crush, Stab, and Slash is pretty negligible. This, coupled with the fact that it's easier to acquire Slash options like an Abyssal Whip, rather than something like your Abyssal Bludgeon, makes their vulnerability to Crush nearly meaningless. Increasing Gargoyle's Stab and Slash defensive bonuses while lowering their Crush defense should do the trick especially with the introduction of the 5-tick zombie axe to the pool of serviceable crush weapons. Also take note of the gargoyle's increased weakness to one of the new range styles, since, of course, heavy ammo can break rocks. We saved the thickest, and in my opinion the cutest, example for last, the giant mole. One of the simplest bosses the game has to offer, but a widely popular one and a great source of brew secondaries for all the iron men and iron women out there. This earth-loving ball of fur would surely hate to be smacked with a surge of water, so it'll be given a 50% weakness to water spells. This is a good example of what may come, because it doesn't exaggerate any existing weaknesses, but it does open up more avenues for new boss farming methods. For anyone wanting to take matter into their own hands and test out these changes in a more numerical approach, our good friends over at the OSRS Wiki made this awesome and easy-to-use DPS calculator. Customize your gear layouts, include the proposed defensive changes, adjust your stats, attack styles, active prayers, it's all there, ready to use, and we'll include a link in the description. The old school team would love to hear your thoughts on this approach going forward with elemental weaknesses and split range styles, so type up any ideas you have and let's make sure we can pave the way for a bright and logical future for our favorite game.